And we're back now for the jump off. And I tell you, it's certainly going to be a two-horse race that we haven't seen anything like this for a while, have we? Just two horses in the jump off here, Peter? It's very dramatic. It's uh, an interesting strategy that comes into play here for a two-horse jump off. Unlike a poker game where you've got maybe 15 horses in the jump off, so go for it. You know, you've got everything to gain. So, uh, if, and if you don't go for it, you know, you, you don't even have a chance. Absolutely. Now we've got uh, strategy comes into play. Judy Garofalo is going to go first. She know that McLean can be fast and clear, so she might as well as take a shot. Well. She she, there's nothing but a shot to be taken. And I'm watching the jump crew right now. A couple of those jumps are going up a little bit, Peter. Yes. They're, they're, they're raising those jumps. Conrad Homefeld is making sure his Peter, finale is known. Peter, you had an opportunity to... Uh, yes. We had a chance to do a little course walk uh, before the competition started. Let's take a look. It starts off with this green original fence number two, the Oxer. The riders will take it at a full gallop. They make a sharp right-hand turn, jump carving right around fence 11A to the Fendi vertical. On landing, they go right over to the original last jump, fence 14, the Spy Coast Oxer. If all's clear and well, they gallop right on over, probably inside the Hermes obstacle to the Wolfer Estates big wide oxer. They fly on over, make a right hand turn going back towards the gate to the red double. Fence 9AB, that's a very tight one. Again going towards the gate, it's going to be hard for them to fit in that short step. They make a sharp right turn and gallop to our sponsor meter 60 FTI vertical. If they're still good, it's a hard left turn galloping over to a new jump, fence 15 which is the yellow, white, and gray ditch obstacle. It's an oxer with a ditch under it. The fastest, without knocking anything down, is going to walk away with a lot of money today. See? And we're back live here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show, and we've got a good one for you. In our history of covering these Hampton Classics since uh, 1996 here on WVBH, I never experienced what we experienced today. It, it's one for the record, isn't it? It's very exciting. You know, we don't always see this. It's very rare you only have one or two clear, but what drama. And uh, all I can tell you and share with you is what I'd be thinking if I was Judy Garofalo Torres on Oliver. I'd want to put some kind of pressure on McLean. I'd want to go as fast as I possibly could, but leave the jumps up with the hopes that I go fast enough that it makes McLean go a little bit out of his comfort level and maybe make a mistake. That's really... Any kind of pressure she can put on him right now. Let's yes. face it, she's dealing with the master. She's not just dealing with anybody. She's Ooh. dealing with the master. He has dealt with the pressure cooker of the Olympics, of the World Equestrian Games. You name it, he's been there. He's been to Aachen this year. He's been to the number one platform in the world. This is just another and conquered day, it. and this is just another day at the office. So the bottom line is Judy's got to really find something inside of herself right now. That's right. She's got to put the cards on the table and say, "I'm going for broke." Well, go for broke, but leave the jumps up. If she has two poles down, then it's over. I mean, the, the main thing is go fast, but go clear. This way, McLean. Right has some, even though he may not want to admit it, a little bit of pressure. There's a lot of money on the line. How do you, how do you challenge perfection? Yesterday, McLean was the winner of the uh, Fendi Cup, which was, the conditions were not as nice as today. Amazing. Well, he, he competed because of the sponsors. He made it very clear to me, he said, you know, this is very important in our country. It's very important for us to compete because the sponsors are so important for us in this sport. Just like in any other uh, country, the sponsors come first, and we must remember that for our sport. It is good sport. Here at the Hampton Classic, they did, they did everything they possibly could to make that footing jumpable. Yeah, no, it was good, it was safe, it was good sport. Now, there's another thing at stake here, and that is perhaps the first time in Hampton Classic history where the same horse, where the same rider wins all three Grand Prix. 
That's what we could see here this afternoon. And I think McLean would like to add that to his list of accomplishments. It's history. McLean likes history. He Guys, likes to make history. we're going to go right to the ring right now. There's the sounding of the horn. The pressure cooker begins. Judy is in the in gate with her trusted, mighty little mount, and Oliver. You know, and it's great to see this horse get this type of, you know, this is a, a, a platform, an international platform for this veteran to be. I mean, this is a David versus Goliath scenario, isn't it? A well put. Very exciting. I mean, to be in a mono e mono duel with McLean Ward and Sapphire on on Grand Prix Sunday here at the Hampton Classic. I, it's an honor. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> but fortunately, Judy is, you know, has enough mileage that just being here isn't enough. And She'd like to pull it out. Oh, yeah. And, and if anybody ever thought that this horse was past his peak, think, think again. Amen. The bell is rung. She's got 30 seconds to get through the start marker. She looks around. Again, we begin with the Green Oxer, the original fence number two. And let's see how tight a track she can make to the Fendi vertical, the original fence number three. There goes Judy. Beautiful jump at number one. Through the gap between the flower pot and the Liverpool. Good at two. She's being prompt, but yet really trying to preserve a clear jumping effort. The Spy Coast Oxer, still it's clear. A, it's a great way of putting it. Look how she is being a little oh, Nicholsworth conservative to preserve now this that. This 9AB proved to be a very difficult double. And they raised it now. This is bigger than before. Good at A, ah. out over B. Two more jumps, and then the pressure could be on McLean Ward. It's still up. Just the ditch to go. This is a new jump. This has a dry ditch underneath it. It's fence number 15. Fantastic. Well done, horse. Judy. One time fault. One time. Okay. Well, strategy now. One time fault. Okay, so if McLean has a rail, he loses. That's Judy right. wins. McLean goes clear. He wins. So you know he's Judy carrying second. it onto this field right now thinking, I've got to go clear. Bottom line, and within the time allowed, typical of what he's had to deal with in international competition. Right. He knows right. what that's all about. He's been to the pressure cooker before in the Olympics. Those of you that have watched him last year, you know what that's like. Those of you that watched him in the World Cup this year, you also know he was under that pressure cooker. McLean Ward knows what that's all about. What this really is, is just like so many of his Nations Cups rounds, to put in a clear round under a, within a tight time allowed. He's starting out with a little more pace than Judy. Good at one. Judy's hoping for just the drop of a toe. Now, McLean went around the flower pot to the Fendi. He's using more ground speed than Judy. He's galloping on to the Spy Coast and rocks Sapphire back onto her hocks. Good at the Spy Coast Oxer. Now our bogey. Come on. He's definitely faster than Judy. Now this is a very difficult double. Even if you ride it perfectly, you can have a pull down. Good at A. Wow. Good at B, two jumps from home. Boy, this mare's wow. jumping. One step oxer over a ditch to go. Wow. There it is. There it is. Three P. There it is. We have McLean a champion. Ward. Three Pete. Well put. Time of 50.81. McLean Ward. He, he Sapphire. That's the headline. He wins Friday. He wins Saturday. He wins Sunday. That's history. Absolutely remarkable. That is really a true demonstration of just how far and above the rest of the field he and his horse really are. Master class. And look at her walk out. We've witnessed history here at the Hampton Classic Core Show. She just trots right out. It's another day at the office for Sapphire and McLean Ward. Wow. Looking at our uh, Do you think he was sweating? Group? I think he was sweating. Absolutely. <laughs> you know McLean. He wants that. He likes the taste of blue. 
time of 50.81. Uh, Judy Garaf Latour is at a time of 56.88. How can you win against the McLean Ward? Wow. Well, maybe you have to be a BZ Madden. Ah. <laughs> well put. There's an answer right no there. No offense, McLean. <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. Great, Congratulations. great sport. What a what a class. This is our, if I may, this is our top uh, top six. There we are: McLean Ward, Judy Garofalo, Derek Kenny, Jose Rega, Shane Sweetnam, and Kevin Babington. I think Mario Delorier might have slipped in he there slipped somewhere. He slipped in we there to too. That's get right. our. Yeah official results, but uh, pull that great together. drama today here at the Hampton Classic. Excellent. Doesn't get better. Well, stay with us. We're going to be uh, bringing you all of the uh, press conference, the winner's circle. Stay with us. More to follow here on WVBH-TV. marketplace the game has changed for good the differences between winning and losing is having the experience and depth of character to meet new challenges Padraig Harrington back-to-back -back British Open champion and winner of the PGA Championship at the British Open in 2008 the game changed for me as I turned for home I hold a critical putt on the 10th green and I never look back from there when the game changes in your world join the thousands of organizations who turn to FTI hi I'm Steve and from a backyard patio to a front entrance or driveway, the paving stones I... Fire, everyone lining up. Very exciting. I know this is, as we said before, this is really all about three-peat, as Pete Leon was saying earlier, the win on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Look at the mayor. She just walks right through that award ceremony just like it's nothing. Like, like any great athlete, whether it's Secretariat, whether it's uh, LeBron James, whether it's Michael Jordan, you look at this horse, look at her muscles, look at her conformation. She's just an incredible athlete. Well, and look at everybody there. The, you know, the team is there. Team Sapphire is there right now. Lee McKeever and Erica and the kids. The people who really are behind the scenes, who are, are Sapphire's team, aren't they? Well, this is a 360-degree victory for Sapphire and McLean. It's not just what they did in the ring today. It's all the things that led up to two clear rounds on Friday, two clear rounds today. The, the feed, the blacksmith, the vet, the training, the flat work, how much, how many jumps, not too many, not too few, the right bit, the right ride. It's, uh, it's It all comes together. Masterfully handled, really masterfully handled. It, it is so exciting. Again, McLean Ward, his first win here when he, we were talking about the other day when he was 13 years old. And I he looked at me when, when about 20 press were coming at him. He said, what do I do? And I said, young man, your life is about to change. That's and right. He, he said, what and, does that, what, I said, every word that comes out of your mouth from now on will be quoted. And he said, I'll never forget you saying that to me. And we, told, we laughed about it the other night, and here he is again in the winner circle. Oh. And he is a true ambassador of show jumping for American sport here in this country and certainly around the world. I'd have to say that... If I were George Morris, the chef to keep of the U.S. team, I'm, I'm feeling really good right now. Well, you know, he's, he's had his sights set on, you know, keeping this mayor just right. You know, he hasn't shown, this mayor has not shown since Aachen, Germany, uh, in July. Uh, she's been home. She's been working. As McLean said, she really hasn't jumped a jump. He's been keeping her muscles fit and jumping fit, but that's basically it, but no height whatsoever. And it shows. I mean, the mayor just, she couldn't have been fresher, couldn't have been better. Outstanding. And George has got to be feeling very good that one of his marquee horse rider combinations is in excellent form going into a championship year. And as we look down the line, 
there were a lot of very, very good four fall performances from horse rider combinations that he that he would like to be able to tap on the shoulder and build a team around. Absolutely, and I think that that's a really very, very important point to make. And we're looking forward to the World Equestrian Games next year. And I know McLean Ward is, has his sights set on that. But as McLean says, I take that particular event and work backwards. This was on his calendar. He wanted, he wanted this win. Now he looks to the World Equestrian Games, which of course we hope everyone in the United States supports. And that's, that's probably the little, little you know, tweaking of improvement that McLean has done in his competitive show jumping. I mean, he's always been a winner. He's always been able to go out and win anything. But now, over the last couple of years, he's been able to target and deliver. In Florida, the horse jumped, four, went in the ring four times, won three out of four times. Right. Right. All big, big money Grand Prix. I mean, it was it's tremendous. Goes through the World Cup Finals to win and does just that. Um, it's, it's wonderful how he's very, able to do that now. Very impressive. And again, we're going to just run down the order here. Again, McLean and Sapphire on top. And then Judy Garofalo and Taurus with Oliver, that great veteran. Dara Kenny and Obelix. One of our top and upcoming young riders, no question. Very impressive. No I question. Mean, he had a, a wonderful week, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, for those of us in the U.S., we're going to see a lot more of oh, him. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the, the back of his jacket <laughs> as opposed to the front of it. Mario Delorier slips into fourth place with that unfortunate four faults. Oh, the last my jump. goodness. I, he just rode beautifully. Uh, again, we're looking forward to Mario uh, representing the U.S. team. Absolutely. Uh, uh, shortly. That's very exciting. It's and this great. is arguably his number three horse. So to have that wonderful a week. So, and again, to be able to have Mario to choose from, to put on one of our, our United States teams, it's, it's, it's a big deal for us. It really is. No question. It's a great welcome. Again, Jose Rega is fifth with Robbie Lee and then Shane Sweetnam. Yes, yeah, Spy Coast Farms, Amaretto Darko. Uh, an excellent performance Super. again today. Again, sired by Darko. Winner yes, yes, our winner. And then Kevin, Kevin Babington and Souvenir. As you can see, there's Mario. As you can see, we had three of the top seven uh, represented Ireland. And I'm glad to say that the U.S. did finish first and second. Yes. <laughs> we are going to miss Conrad Holmfeld dearly well we are and, I, and again i think this is a perfect example peter you walked the course you came back and you looked at me and said it's tough i don't know how tough but it's tough we found out how tough <laughs> we found out it how was tough. tough this is what a finale for conrad he goes out with a bang and and with our best well, our best horse on top and well that's really the really a, a beautiful test when the right horse rider combinations are in the top 10 and especially the right one winning you know that it's a good course i mean arguably that mare right now is 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 really sitting at number one and for as as far as our horse in this country i think everybody would agree that the mayor is really she deserves that spot right yeah, now. The, without question the number one horse in america uh and it's very easy to argue to make an argument that she may be the number one horse in the world exactly and for us to be able to see this mare out on this field today the the the, the weather held off just enough so we had some great footing so we had fantastic jumping and to see the mare that way it, it is so exciting to me I'm, i've been watching this mare from day one and i've just been waiting for time after time for her to come in the ring and just show everybody how to do it it'll be interesting when you speak to mclean to find out you know how many wins this horse has had internationally and also so what kind of money, my goodness, I, the, I, I can't even begin to guess how much prize money this horse has won in her career. Somehow or another, I think he knows. <laughs> I think he does. I think he does. <laughs> there is no question. I, I, I can tell you between himself and Blue Chip Bloodstock and, and Thomas Grossman and everybody, the, the team here, they have to keep a, a, a close watch on everything that goes on, as, as you know. Yes. You know as well as anybody what it takes to make this whole game work, and it's not easy. You know, it takes a lot of money to keep these horses in tip-top shape, and... 
whether it is uh, you know the vets, the farriers, the 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 shipping and and these horses, you know, right. getting to and from Flor uh, Florida, going whether it's to Europe and back, it's the planes, it's the trains, it's the you name it. Well, we're we're very proud here at the Hampton Classic and as a country to have McLean Ward and Sapphire carrying the banner, carrying the flag for us. I mean, Absolutely. we are so lucky. We really are. We're, we're quite fortunate. I know, again, he feels honored. And we saw it yesterday. We saw it the yes. other day in the interview. You and I speaking to Lee McKeever and the, the team, they're just as proud. And, it, again, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a day for us. It's a great, what a great way to end this week. It's been great to be able to spend this time with you. We love to watch this, obviously. We have a passion. But it's a, it's, it's a vocation, advocation that we share. And to be able to see it at this, at this time of year, at the end of the summer, it's been a long summer for everybody. Uh, it's been, a, again, one of those years we, we have new sponsors. We have some sponsors that couldn't actually. That's right partake this year but they said count us in for next year right and right. we certainly want to keep the quality keep people coming back to the hampton classic uh we were sold out here as far as spectators uh so i have to say that we're fortunate in being able to again present a show oh and that's what it's about and what a wonderful show it was scott thank you sir i appreciate it. i'm going to jump out here we're going to be back in just a minute with a press conference talk to mclean ward don't miss it. McLean's live with us. Back in a moment. In your world, join the thousands of organizations who turn. And our victory gallop, and if ever a victory was earned, McLean Ward came in, last rider of the day, made it happen. The sun is out, the best horse and rider combinations are out there enjoying their victory gallop. What a great day. Peter, you've been part of many a victory gallop. This is uh, an exhilarating time of the day to be able to enjoy this. There's nothing like it, Ernie. When you're out there, and especially at the front of the line like McLean is right now, and he's done so many times before, it is just what a feeling of satisfaction. You know, there's a lot of ceremony to the uh, work that you guys do. Um, and it's, it's earned because you have to respect the riders, the horses, and the accolades, and, and the ribbons, and all of the prestige that comes with, uh, with events such as this. This is really an amazing, amazing day for us here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show. Well, it takes a team here, too. If you look around, the staff here this week, I tell you, I... I know how many people it takes but I looked around this week I have to tell you I think there's more than ever because this year it was most important to make this better than ever because and looking on the field just if I the FTI uh, jump right in front is uh, Dennis O'Shaughnessy the chairman of FTI consulting uh, with uh, the presentation there if we can get to the field guys that that would be great uh, you can see uh, presentation of ribbons and uh, there's McLean Ward well you know this mayor she's just you, you look at this mayor she's just walking around saying yeah I did it and you see those those dapples Peter they're, they're the size of apples <laughs> they certainly they, they, are right and if you look at this horse's hind end you can see her hips are very prominent they rise up and tall those are big powerful engines those hind legs and hips and rear end. I mean, no wonder she can power over those jumps. It's magnificent. And McLean has done a phenomenal job harnessing the strengths that this mare has as an athlete. She's big, she's powerful, she's got a huge stride, and he utilizes all of that to his advantage, to the mare's advantage, to be a top international competitor. Well, and it shows. I'm just watching her. She walks out of the ring here. She just looks like and the other great. And very elastic. I mean, there's there's not a rigid or stiff part to her body. You know, she's got that, that loose 
kind of swagger, that elasticity yeah. as she even just walks out of the arena. And that's what enables her to jump these monster tracks. Mm. Our next uh, item up will be the press conference. So uh, stay with us. You're watching WBVH-TV's live coverage of the Hampton Classic Core Show. Press conference. We have press from all over the world that will be here at the uh, Hampton Classic. So stay with us. We'll have an interview with McLean Ward also. Yes, we will. Not to be missed. Our title sponsor, FTI. On Long Island. Really the wrap up of what was an incredible week and a really incredible afternoon. As you all know, I always do this introduction as if nobody knows who's sitting up here. But our uh, reserve champion today in the $250,000 FTI Grand Prix and World Cup qualifier with her 19-year-old stallion, Judy Garofalo Torres. And then our champion for an unprecedented record fourth time champion of the Grand Prix at the Hampton Classic came into today with three wins along with Margie Engel and the legendary Rodney Jenkins and now he stands alone as the only rider to win the Grand Prix here at the Hampton Classic four times McLean Ward. And I promise I won't start listing all of his uh, records that he holds as two Olympic gold medals and so on because we'll be here too long and we know you're not here to hear me speak. But McLean, um, you know, Sapphire, it seems like you've really uh, been very careful picking and choosing when you ride her. You don't use her uh, all the time, obviously. And you really, uh, as a true horseman, plan throughout the year, starting even last year, certain events that you're targeting. And I uh, just want to ask you, as you look at the year's schedule, um, and I think we know partly this answer, just when you see the Hampton Classic, how you fit that into your planning. Uh, well, this year what we decided to do was uh, pick the FTI events. Uh, in Palm Beach and Southampton. So it's been very good to us, and I, uh, I want to start off by saying a very special thanks to the Shaughnessy's and FTI. Uh, what a great sponsor, and they've really raised uh, our sport to a new level, and, and thank you, and we hope it continues. So that's great. Uh, yeah, Sapphire, you know, we always say we're, we're very lucky to be in her life. She's not in ours, and uh, what a blessing it is to have this horse, and she, she never does anything wrong. So you're allowed to, to really plan her year and pick events, um, because as long as you stay out of her way, she, uh, she normally comes through. Um, so, you know, the Hampton Classic, uh, it's a great prize money class, obviously, but this is uh, the most prestigious event in our country, if not in all of North America. I think the, the level and the standard is very high, um, and so this was uh, on our radar, uh, and we really uh, wanted to come here and have a very successful week. And you know, last year when we were sitting here and Hillary had won, we said she became only the second rider ever, along with Joe Farges, to win both the Friday Grand Prix and the Sunday Grand Prix in the same year. So now, of course, we have three riders who have done that. And often we think about the quick turnaround of the Grand Prix from Friday to Sunday, but I'd like to ask you about the very quick turnaround from the first round to the jump off. Uh, yeah, that was actually quite difficult. Um you know, it was only about seven minutes between rounds, and, and Sapphire really not, never got to cool out. It's quite a humid day, obviously a huge field here, a uh, long course, and, and she's very fit, but, uh, you know, she, it's like running a marathon and then coming back six minutes later and doing another few miles. So uh, that was quite difficult. We only ended up jumping one jump in the schooling area. Uh, Judy did a, she did a great job, and she did absolutely the right plan today uh, to put the pressure on, jump a clear round. Uh, that made my life a little more stressful. Uh, rail down would have been easier. Um, so, uh, and, and Sapphire was running out of gas a little bit at the end of the jump off for sure, and so was I. Um, but, you know, she knows the game, and, and that's the way it, way it uh, shaked out, and, and uh, it worked out okay, I think. And Judy, those of us on the circuit, of course, have uh, seen you for years, and obviously you've won Grand Prix, and you've ridden in Europe in Nations Cups. But uh, this one obviously is a huge one. And as each rider came and got fault, 
We just have to ask you, when McLean entered the ring, exactly what you were thinking. I'm talking first round, of course. Well, I have to admit, I wouldn't be upset if he had a rail, definitely not. Um, but I know he's a great rider and that's the best horse in the world, so I was expecting them to go clear, but of course hoping that they had a rail down. Uh, in just a second, we'll take some questions from all of you. And if you have a question, please raise your hand and Violet will bring you the microphone. Everyone, everyone understands the answers a lot better if they've heard the questions. But before we do that, um, I would like to introduce someone that, again, those of us on the horse show circuit all know. It, it's so great with so many sponsors that we have at the Hampton Classic. When we have a sponsor, in fact, our lead sponsor, someone who is part of our horse show circuit, uh, it means so much more to us. And also, it's not just someone who, uh, to be blunt, writes a check and that's the end of it, but someone who's really involved with us in making the horse show uh, so much better. Uh, please welcome at this time the chairman of FTI, Dennis Shaughnessy. Thank you very much. Uh, number one, congratulations to McLean and Judy. McLean, I'm giving you a lot of money this year, I think. Uh, so, uh, McLean, for those of you who don't know, won you know, the FTI $400,000 Grand Prix down at uh, Wellington and almost won the Rider Challenge at the same time. So, uh, keep it up, I guess. We'll have to employ you. It'd be, you know, right. Uh, uh, I would be remiss without thanking Jeanette Barth the staff here, uh, they just put on such a world-class event. Uh, they're the easiest people for us to work with, and, and we do a lot of sports promotion, the Yankees, the PGA, and here in the horse world. And Jeanette, to you on behalf of all your staff from FTI, thank you very much for all your help and what you do. Uh, Thank you, Mother Nature. Uh, obviously, uh, we would not have wanted to be standing here yesterday. And I guess it just goes to show that uh, somebody, you know, with a higher authority enjoys the Hampton Classic as well. Uh, everybody asks us, why is FTI so involved in the horse world? And, and I think I, I would very, you know, succinctly put it that, you know, we're one of the largest consulting firms in the world. We're, we're brought in globally to, to really solve tough problems for companies. And people have to trust us. And, and I think this is one of the true sports where you have a partnership of talent, where, where the riders who are so skilled and the horses that are such great athletes, there has to be this element of trust. There has to be the element of trust in the riders, the ability to navigate the course and steer the horse there has to be obviously the element of trust from the horse that the riders, of course, you know, will steer them in the right way. I think it's what makes FTI great is the trust that we can create, you know, with our clients. And we are delighted to be a part of the Hampton Classic. And again, thank you all very much for allowing us in a small way to participate. And again, to McLean and Judy, you know, it was great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis, and we really thank you. You know, you and Mary Kay, your involvement really does uh, make a big impact on what we uh, have here at the Hampton Classic. Thank you so much. Uh, if someone's ready now, any questions, we'll be happy to take them. Just raise your hand. Violet, Jamie. Hey, congratulations, guys. Uh, first of all, would you be able to tell us the years and the horses' names that, that you won on previously? Uh, 97 and 98, Twist du Valon, uh, was owned by Harry Gill. Uh, 2003, Hurricane, was owned by Sarah Willeman, and obviously Sapphire. Yes. And Judy, your horse is 19 years old. I think we know a lot about Sapphire, but can you tell us a little bit about how you prepared him for this horse show? Um, I've had Oliver for, I've been jumping into Grand Prix for 10, year, 10 years. Um, and this morning, weirdly enough, I just got a, Facebook message from his groom when he was four years old. So I thought that was kind of exciting at the same time. Um, but to prepare him for the show, I, uh, I, I I wanted this class to be his, his class for the year. So I tried to gear up to this, uh, going to a few small horse shows before this, but this has been the main event for the summer. Um, 
McLean, was the course uh, extremely tough in comparison to other years? Is that why there were so few in the jump off, do you think? Uh, and if so, it, and, and if it was tough, what made it so hard? I, I do think it was quite difficult. Um, I, I think over the last few years, the, the standard has really gone back up here again. And I think like, uh, like Dennis said, Jeanette and her team have really uh, taken this show to even another level. Um, and I certainly think the scheduling this year, having a week off before the Masters, uh, brought in a few more top uh, horses. You always have the top riders, but really brought in top horses. And I know Authentic was supposed to be here, and unfortunately BZ got hurt, uh, which was a shame. Um, but it was difficult. I think the water line caused a lot of trouble. That's a very spooky water jump, and it came very early on the course. Um, and I think the ground was quite good. A little bit down the last line, it was getting a little mushy on that side, and maybe that's why the last fence fell a few times, as you saw, late in the class. Um, but, but in general, I think considering the last three days we've had, that the conditions held up beautifully and the footing held up great. And uh, I think it's fantastic to be able to jump on this grass field. And I know there's some discussion about it, but I hope it always stays grass. So that's my opinion. Working, I'm from the New York Times, I'm working on a piece on the developing rider program and the equitation, how, we, how we're trying to bring juniors up into the, um, into the pros later on. And I was wondering if you could both talk about your experiences as juniors and how that helped you. And obviously this course tested a lot of the kind of trappy questions that you would have gotten in the act or, you know, what kinds of ways in which the de developing rider program is helping riders be exposed to tougher competition. Well, I mean, certainly any developing rider program, whether it be here in the United States or, or, uh, or anywhere here in the United States or throughout the world, you know, exposure to these kind of conditions, these kind of atmospheres uh, is, is, is key. Um, I won the talent over here when I was 13, and that was my first experience uh, with this kind of venue. Um, and uh, it takes years of getting your feet wet at that level to, to really feel comfortable uh, and, and I think to truly do a good job. So certainly years of experience, and that's what the developing riders program is supposed to do. Each of you. So, Judy, I asked you about when McLean entered the ring, but as the class was progressing, I mean, when each rider ensuing, could you like believe what you were seeing? Uh, this event being especially, you know, not just any old Grand Prix, but the Hampton Classic. I was kind of surprised because my horse jumped it so well um, and didn't have any difficulties anywhere, but I. Being the Hampton Classic, you know it's a difficult track, but I did think there was going to be a few more clears. But with the water line and the Dubber Liverpools coming at the end and the footing getting a little soggy at the end, I think that's what got them. But I thought there would be a couple more. It was getting pretty exciting at the end. And you said to me as we were coming out, you know, second to McLean and Sapphire, really, uh, in a lot of ways, that, that's bigger than a lot of other wins. Being second to them was is really very exciting. The best horse in the world and the best rider in the world, if not the best, so I'll take it. And McLean, I, we have, this is her seventh win this year. Does that, I know you're really good on the history and the stats. I think six or seven this year. She's, we've had an incredible year. Uh, she seems to keep getting better. Well, maybe she either, she keeps getting better or I stop getting in her way, one or the other. Um, but I mean, what a career and uh, you know, I'm young and I was thinking about where the next horses are coming from and it's a little scary after her, you know, I, I'm not sure if I'll ever have one as good, but uh, I'm gonna enjoy while it lasts. And as you see today, I figure I'm just getting started. I got five, six years left. So, um, so hopefully she stays healthy. And, and you know, I owe a special thanks to all the people also that have been involved with this horse and all of my horses, uh, Eric and Lee, uh, for those who don't know, have been uh, with, with our organization. Uh, 24 years and uh, this wouldn't any of this would be possible without my father uh, he's my my supporter and uh, this is his birthday today so it's for him today so yeah, nice birthday present um, if there's anyone else I know before you to disappear we always want to do some uh, photos up here and we'll ask Dennis uh, and Mary Kay to come up for photos and Jeanette and I know also Peter Leone, uh, Olympic medalist, will want to talk to you both on WVVH TV before you go. So I say that before you t uh, both disappear. But on behalf of FTI and the Hampton Classic Horse Show, we thank everyone for coming. It really was one of our great years ever. And we look forward to seeing everyone again next year. Thank you.
conference now and we sure for 631-267-8121 oceandunes.net And we're back at the press conference now, and we sure have a statistic here that I think we need to make a formal announcement now. Thanks to you, sir, with FTI McLean, you have a formal announcement. Yeah, we're right near a million dollars, just over a million dollars, one for the season, and it wouldn't have been possible without Mr. Shaughnessy and FTI support. And again, this has to do with this class today being the first $250,000 class sir, we've had here that I know of, certainly, and also this winter, the FTI class in Palm Beach, correct? Yeah, two great classes, yeah. two great competitions, and even with the, with the difficult weather today, you see the crowd filed in, so hopefully uh, it was a success for everybody. No, it was great. I, th I think, you know, uh, this is a fabulous sport, and a lot of people don't realize that this is the second most popular sport on television in Europe, next to uh, their football we would call soccer. Right. And so, you know, we just need to do more, you know, to expose the sport to people, and, and you know, I mean, I, it's like anything else in the U.S., Money doesn't talk often; it screams. And the You're more right. money, right. you know, that people compete for, the more eyeballs and more attention people so, tend to pay. You know, well, to it. but it's it's people like you that understand the sport that step up. And again, it's the trust factor. And this this year, more than ever, trust has been a very important issue for everything that we're dealing with. And you've done it once again. And on behalf of us here at Hampton Classic, certainly you've done it one more time. And we want to thank you. Well, thank you. Really, the, uh, our, our role is very small compared to what the staff does here. And I think a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is that this is the, obviously the icing on the cake, uh, the Grand Prix. The Hampton Classic is about everything from the lead lines of the little tykes to, you know, you know children, juniors, yeah. adults, amateurs. And, and those people competed, for example, yesterday, as McLean knows, in some of the worst, could, but they were out here. No matter they were what. Competing and yep. they were having a ball. So, again, to Jeanette, Barth, and the entire staff of Hanta Classic, uh, our congratulations on not only managing a great horse show, but navigating Mother Nature. And, and somebody obviously had some influence <laughs> with the right people because the day turned out to be beautiful. What a hurricane. Right. <laughs> what a hurricane. What a hurricane is right. And you mentioned something that, again, on a personal note for us, it was when you were 13 years old. Yeah. When we had our first time, you looked at me, he won the speed derby here, and all of a sudden, this swarm of press came at him, and he said, Scott, what do I do? And I said, from this point on, young man, every word that comes out of your mouth is going to be quoted. And it has been that way ever since, and we are proud of you here, I tell you. I've watched you around the world, and we continue to. You are an ambassador for show jumping for the United States. I know you are honored to have Sapphire in your stable, but this is a proud day for Lee, for Erica, for your dad, for the team. Well, that's, uh, you're absolutely right. And you yeah. know, this is this is a team sport. You see us as an individual out there, but it takes a, an army to put this together. And and just as uh, these hard times you were saying before, and companies making things happen, and it takes an army. And and it's the same with us. What you see is just the the cover on the book or the icing on the cake, as Mr. Shaughnessy said. Uh, there's a lot of people that make this happen for me and, and help me be successful, and this is a great win for all of us. Well, again, it's the team. And Jeanette Barth Cohen, please step in. Yep. Uh, yep. No problem. Please step no in. Problem. Again, it's the team effort, and we know what it takes. This has been a, a big year for you to keep the quality of the Hampton Classic, and what a great way to end a terrific week. Absolutely. We were thrilled with the results, and uh, McLean, congratulations. It was fantastic. And thank you, Dennis, for your no, ongoing support. It's we're a wonderful delighted. partnership. We really appreciate it. We enjoy it. And we, you know, we tried to make this horse show um, feel the same, regardless of where we are with the economy. We, we found places to cut back that people who came to the show wouldn't feel. And we didn't do any new capital expenditures. We really tried to keep our belts tight this year, but um, I think it was a fantastic, fantastic year. It worked. It was successful all the way around. And it was also, this was history. This was Conrad Homefeld's finale. And oh, look what a I finale it was. It was, was a great, it was a great course. I mean, he made yeah. me promise we wouldn't do anything grand. That's right. <laughs> 
believe me, I wanted to. We wanted to have a big spectacle, and he just begged me, and I listened. So I said, only because I love you, I'm not going to do something. Well, I mean, this but is really his uh, is his, his masterpiece with yeah. this field is because of him. And what a great swan song for him to have I hope so. And three Pete, and three Pete, a win Friday, a win Saturday, and a win Sunday. Yeah, it's it, a team effort, you know. So it doesn't get better than uh, live here at the Hampton Classic with this Grand Prix. I'm Scott Evans, and on behalf of the team that Jeanette Barth Cohen has put together here, it doesn't get better. It really doesn't. With sponsors like FTI Consulting and show jumping rider McLean Ward, it's show jumping at its best. Hampton Classic, we're here at VVH, and on behalf of Peter Leone, my co-host this week, and of course, Ernie Shimizi and brother Greg, we've had quite a team. It's been a, it's been a group effort. We hope to have you here next year with us, live at the Hampton Classic. See you down the road. Thank you. Bernie no, Pat, thanks a lot. Thank you. Peter? No, I'm not. Great event. Really great. Great, great event. Did it. Well done. Where do you go next? Lauren wants one, so I told her okay, that we'll make yeah, sure. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Worth one. I want to have one.